friends, neighbors, and of course, the ever popular and often underappreciated YouTube comment section. Hello, and welcome back. Uh, here is the disclaimer. Um, because I am a glutton for punishment, I'm going to continue to build electrical things on the internet. So I look forward to your comments, he says sarcastically. Also, uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. Please take any of the build procedures or uh, advice or things that I say uh, with that in mind. This is for entertainment purposes only. So if you get hurt or blow something up, know that I have no money to pay your lawsuit. Anyway, hello and welcome back. Um, today we're going to build a, um, a 1 to 6 Socopex breakout box. Uh, these are pretty popular um, here at LM. And... Uh, I've got one to build, and I thought, why not make it take longer and film it for the people for, of YouTube to tell me all of the things that are being done incorrectly. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, kind of. All right, so um, this is a standard rack panel for us. So for those of you not familiar with a Socopex connector, this is a 19-pin um, connector that is primarily used in lighting. Um, that uh, will give you six circuits of audio, or excuse me, six circuits of power on one main trunk line. Uh, so uh, zooming in on this, uh, there is a star pattern. These are these seven pins in the center are uh, are individual grounds, um, and then each one is uh, hot and neutral. So these are all split out into three. If you can see uh, right here. So this is uh, hot, neutral ground, hot, neutral ground, hot, neutral ground, hot, neutral ground, et cetera, uh, with the center pin uh, mostly being, being unused in these. Um, there are configurations that you can get with this particular type of connector that allow you to, to have a common ground. Um, we wire them here um, with uh, separate grounds, uh, just so that each, each circuit is, is sacrosanct. So if you find yourself uh, having noise or something like that on there, you can... Uh, you're not uh, you're not grounding. Um, there's there's not multiple ground buses. You know, I mean, in theory, it kind of all goes back to the same place, but just just in case, we we do keep this separate here. So, um, this is a cool connector. These are just solder cups on the back. Um, as as far as as multi pin connectors to build, the Socopex ones are actually pretty easy. Um, they're they're a big um, they're a big solder cup. This is designed for 12 gauge cable, so it's actually is is pretty pretty easy to uh, to solder. Um, and then on the rack panel, because I'm a bit obsessive with anything that is uh, using a multi-pin, um, I like to know what each of the breakouts are. So if you do have to troubleshoot something, um, you can find it. So on our panels, um, I do have the pin numbers. So this is, uh, you know, positive, negative, ground 13. That just tells you, you know, what number pin this is all, uh, this is all at. So again. That's uh, the basis of this panel. So what this one basically does is it you can you can power um, you can power this panel with six individual circuits from a Socopex trunk line, and then just breaks it out into an in Edison outlet so that you can use it. So uh, for those of you not familiar with this, you know oftentimes Socopex is used um, uh, in in lighting applications. So if you want to just have a piece of truss or multiple light fixtures, you can just one run you can run one trunk line up to it and then just break it out per fixture as, as you need it. So oftentimes there'll be a tail uh, that is permanently attached to, uh, to truss, um, and this will just be the, um, the output of that, and it just squids it out. So this is just a nicer way of squidding it out, technical term, squidding it out. Um, OK, so this, this also has a back enclosure on it, but you will see that in a second. So we'll set this off to the side. Uh, so the outlets that we use, we use Hubble outlets because I like stuff that has been unchanged since the 70s. Um, so the prep work on this kind of thing, oh, and in case you're curious, this is of uh, Hubble 5362 BLK black duplex outlet. Um, so there's a little bit of prep work that, that is involved with this. Um, any, of our, any of our distros here at LM, um, we, we prep these outlets in the same way. Um, our 2130 rack packs and that kind of thing, it's, you know, you're, you're basically maxing out the height on this, on this 2RU enclosure. So if you put this one upside down, you can see that if uh, we have the normal straps to mount it into a wall box, it's not going to fit. So the way that we prep these particular um, outlets are, uh, we'll cut the, uh, we'll, we'll knock these ears off just like this. 
you know, we'll knock each ear off and then we just basically make a cut and then just pull that apart. So in case you're looking at these duplex outlets and you're like, what the heck are they doing? That's, uh, that's how we prep these. So um, I went ahead and did that uh, already just because, you know, watching somebody do that on YouTube is about as interesting as watching paint dry. So that's the, uh, the output side of these connectors. So let's look at this guy. Um, on the back here, there are solder cups, like I mentioned earlier. And uh, one of the other things that I mentioned earlier is that these can share a common ground if you would like. And you can do that using these little rings. Um, so depending on, on the configuration, how you're, you're, you're hitting the ground. So if we cover all of these up, these seven inner rings are the, uh, are the ground pins. Um, so you can order these optional brass rings here. Um, and I'm going to grab my pliers here because this is actually a very precise little fit. So if you want to do these with a common ground, you can put this center ring in here like that. And it's obviously straight. It will be straight. Um, but I want to pull it out of there. And you can, you can grab them like that. And you can also grab this outer ring like this. That will allow you to have common grounds depending on your configuration. But like I said, uh, on ours, I do run them all separate, but we do keep these, these common ground rings in stock. So without further ado, oh, actually, before we do that, um, so what we're going to do as far as the build procedure goes is uh, I'm going to cut a bunch of wire. So I'm going to cut all my hots, my neutrals, and my grounds and get those laid out. And I'm also going to prep my heat shrink because we do run a piece of heat shrink on every single one of these. Um, not that uh, they'll arc, but just in case, it uh, certainly does not hurt to have another level of insulation there. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, again, just to keep this relatively uh, interesting to watch, um, I'm going to prep all my wire, and I will prep the heat shrink, and we will load this with solder. And then as soon as that is done, we'll check back in. All right, so we've got everything prepped. Um, oh no, my nice and neat labels. <laughs> so I have labels printed for everything here that were once nice and neat, but I moved them out of the way. Um, so what we're gonna do for us is um, we're going to uh, terminate our grounds here for us. So the procedure for that is we take a piece of ground wire. We're gonna slide a piece of heat shrink on one end and a ground delineator actually we should probably put that on first so again i know it's kind of weird that i keep a long uh thumbnail and a long pinky nail this is why <laughs> sometimes you uh the, the thumbnail is for network cables and the pinky nail is for uh mostly a spreading heat drink part uh so we're gonna go uh bottom up on this one of course i grabbed the wrong label let's do a three again just take your tactical pinky nail here and slide that on the bottom a leg of that and we're going to do three ground so we'll take this guy so the tricky thing about soldering these is you kind of have to heat the cup up and then that will heat the, the wire up and then you'll feel it just slide right in You give it a little wiggle like that, and there you go. So the thing that I do once, um, sorry, I'm trying to stick my head in front of the camera here. So the thing I try to do is just give it, 
Just make sure that it's not a cold joint. Just visually inspect it. And then once that's done, I'll slide my heat shrink over there. Um, so this is ground pin three. We're gonna have our, our little um, delineator right there. And then once these are all on, we will uh, shrink the heat shrink down. So we're gonna time lapse the rest of this so that it is not incredibly boring. Okay, so this is all terminated. And again, all, all of these multi-pin connectors are not generally the most fun things in the world to solder and build, but as it goes, Socopex is, is, is pretty easy. So again, it's, it's all just sort of figuring out a good order. I feel like every time I build one of these, I'm like, mm, I'm gonna do that different the next time. So anyway, this is good to go. So we're gonna meet this up with our rack panel. So to do that, we just feed these tails in. And I'm sure you're probably wondering why I made these tails so long. Um, it's just easier to make them long and cut them to size versus trying to pre-measure everything. And it just adds a lot of time to the, to the process. And not that cable's cheap. My god, cable. Oops, I forgot the gasket. Um, cable is so expensive now. It's, uh, last time I bought a reel of thin wire, it was, it was 225 bucks. It's like, yeesh. It's a crazy, crazy world that we're living in right now. Okay. Get our little gasket on there. Get this in. So one of the reasons why I do like building these or doing these videos like this is, um, first of all, I think it's a cool how-to. So you know, if you're on a gig and something's wrong with your distro or, or something like that, you can maybe stumble upon this video and it will help you. Uh, the other thing is I like to show how all of these things are made. You know, there is a lot of uh, products that are made in mass. Um, and when you mass produce things, obviously you can make them a lot cheaper. But when you build things in a one-off kind of way like this, um, it, it starts to get expensive. You know, this is a very time-consuming process. It takes about an hour and a half to build one of these. So, you know, there's uh, there's two guys in the integration department. There's me and and there's Ben. So that's there's only two of us building these sort of things. So a lot of these things like that, it, I just want to show why we charge what we charge for them. Um, you know, and then the thing, the other thing with buying stuff from us is these are endlessly configurable. So if you want it in a certain way, you can. 
um, you know, it's, it's again, I, I think a lot of people um, don't really understand how manufacturing works. I was raised in a, a shop, you know, LM is my, my family's company, so, you know, I was, I was raised with looking at how things were built, and I think a lot of people just don't necessarily know that, so it's interesting to uh, show the inner process on, on a lot of this kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm going to stop yakking, and we'll get this term, we'll get this connector mounted. <laughs> So that finishes this build all up. What do you guys think? Are we uh, under 20 code violations per the YouTube comment section? Anyway, um, you know, these are cool. These are cool little breakout projects. Um, you know, very simple. Not the most complicated build in the history of the world, but, uh, you know, it takes, uh, it takes about an hour and change to build each one of these. So um, as with, with always, I, think I, I don't think I've sold you anything yet from this video if you want to buy one of these. Uh, just click the either the upper right hand corner of your screen right now or click the product link in the description. Um, the other thing is if you feel like you want to, you know, if you want to support me in any way um, and you don't necessarily need a case or a power distro or a panel or anything, you can, uh, you can always grab an LM hat or uh, any piece of LM swag. I'll, I'll link that up in the right hand corner if you want to grab a hat or a lunchbox or something like that. Anyway, as always, do appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, even though I give the comment section a hard time, I, uh, I do always enjoy the, uh, the discourse. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. See you guys in the next one. See ya.